6.30 a.m., June 5th, 1944. That was to be H hour of D-Day. All of a sudden, there comes this huge storm in the English Channel. It was raining, and the wind was blowing, and it was cold. We were scared. We were afraid. They knew they had to keep moving, and it had to have taken an incredible strength. I told my buddies all around me that be ready, because we're going to catch hell. And we did. From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantore. June 4th, 1944. In the pre-dawn dark off the coast of southern England, 150,000 Allied troops wait for the signal that will launch the largest invasion in recorded history, D-Day. We've been training for this forever, and we're the best soldiers in the world. They told us that. We're the toughest guys. They can't kill us. We're too too tough. 19-year-old Bob Slaughter is an American infantryman aboard the British ship Empire Javelin. He's part of Company D in the 116th Regiment of the U.S. Army's 29th Division. He and his troops are set to land on the Normandy Beach, codenamed Omaha. I just felt like I'm... I'm proud, you know, I'm proud to be doing this. That's what I felt. Also on board the Empire Javelin are 24-year-old Roy Stevens and his twin brother, Ray. When they joined the National Guard six years ago, they never expected to be on the front lines. They wanted to make a dollar a week and impress the girls. We'd get on that uniform and weren't supposed to wear it, but we'd do it anyway. <laughs> Let people know we were in the National Guard, you know, and it was quite a thing. Roy and Ray come from the small town of Bedford, Virginia. They're two of 40 Bedford boys in the 116th. The young men have been training together for only a few years, but their friendships are lifelong. So we knew all these boys, they knew us, just like one big family. Most of the Bedford boys are in Company A, scheduled to be the very first wave of ground troops to hit Omaha Beach. We're proud of it, you know. We, we're picked. We must be pretty good or something. They've been ordered to land at 6.30 the next morning, June 5th. But it all depends on the weather. At Allied headquarters in Southwark, England, General Dwight D. Eisenhower is reviewing plans for the attack. He meets with his staff weather officer, a 43-year-old Scotsman named James Martin Stagg. The ultimate decision was really in the hands of Martin Stagg, the briefing weather officer. Captain Robert Boongard has been working with Stagg for months. He's part of the forecasting team from the U.S. Army Air Corps, and he's well aware of the stakes. For the invasion to succeed, the Allies need a full moon, low tide, clear skies, and little wind. The moon and the tide will be almost perfect on the 5th, 6th, and 7th, but the weather is less predictable. Our job was not to find an ideal weather situation, but to find out if it would be possible to meet the minimum requirements for the invasion. At a 4 a.m. meeting, Stagg's news is not what Eisenhower wants to hear. A large mass of cool air is sweeping down across Greenland and into the North Sea. Several extratropical cyclones have formed along the front. One will cause high winds, waves, low clouds, and rain. The weather situation declined rapidly to the point where it was, it, was, it was absolutely unacceptable to attempt to get our airborne forces and then, of course, our sea-going forces across to participate in the invasion. Eisenhower knows his window is brief. Waiting for another full moon and low tide would mean delaying the attack by two weeks, damaging the morale of the troops and risking the element of surprise. He decides to hold off the attack for 24 hours and tells Stagg and his teams to forecast the weather for Tuesday, June 6th. That was at 4.15 in the morning on Sunday morning. And so everyone went back and uh, started all over. It was now a a 36-hour forecast, which is much closer toward something that can be accurately forecast. Nearly 24 hours later, at 3.30 a.m. on June 5th, Wind and rain are pummeling southern England. But Stagg has good news for the Allies. 
meteorological reports came in that indicated that there would be a brief window of clear skies and low winds during the late hours of the 5th and then, of course, during the 6th. Light winds mean low waves, so the flat-bottom boats bringing infantry to the beaches of Normandy should be able to land without swamping. And paratroopers dropping down behind enemy lines run little risk of being scattered. But if the skies do not clear up in time, clouds could threaten the air campaign. Bombers and fighter planes will not be able to see their targets. German gunners along the shore. Once again, Eisenhower contemplates postponing the attack. But Stagg assures him the weather will break before dawn. It takes the general less than a minute to issue the order. General Eisenhower came out with when he stopped at Stagg and says, hold it for one more day and have good weather for us for another day. And that was it. And ultimately, General Eisenhower made the decision to send the invasion across the channel with his, his now famous and dramatic order of, okay, let's go. 